For the past few days, we've been seeing the best basketball from Visayas up front and in the spotlight. Uh, in the spotlight, now it's the turn of the best basketball teams from Manila to show this Visayan crowd just what exactly collegiate basketball is like from the Aramok City Superdome. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to ABS-CBN Sports, continuing exclusive coverage of the Philippine Collegiate Champions League. We have a stunner of a uh, main event today as we have two of the most successful franchises in college basketball squaring up as the San Sebastian College of Recoleto Stags take on the Letran Knights. Nico Ramos with me, the Professor Randy Sakdalan. Prof, what a second game we have. Oh yes, this is a rivalry that dates back to the 80s, uh, from the Samboy Lim to the Bong Alvarez era, going to the 90s, you have the Adukul uh, era, Kirby Raimundo, name it! This guys have it in their alumni roster. And uh, they have quite two roster, two quite uh, impressive rosters squaring up against each other today. And it's all for the Luzon Metro Manila Championship. The bracket will be on your screens if you guys are trying to understand how the PCCL system works. Well, this can get a little tricky. Professor, break it down for us. Well, you look at the right side first, okay? On the side of the uh, final four, where has Sakhantuleus and Wanderetran? Well, they've knocked out, okay? UAAP teams, of course, the last one, the Tran shaming FEU Tamar House of the mm -hmm. UAAP. They, they took the uh, De La Salle University Archers and then went on to be beat FEU. That's why they're here in uh, Ormoc. In the case of the San Sebastian Stags, runners up in the NCAA, well, they took out Adamson, another UAAP team. And that's why we have two NCAA teams doing the league a favor, ensuring that there's going to be two teams and San Sebastian and Letran will contest the last final four slot in Manila. That's why it's gonna be war out here in Ormoc. And if you're going to war, why not have the Pinatubo trio with you? And you've gotta be pretty confident <laughs> if you're San Sebastian, of course, Calvin Abueva, Ian Sangalang, and Ronald Pascual. What amazing numbers they put up against Adamson. Oh yes, 29 points for Ronald, 16 boards. The Beast, 24 points, 22 rebounds. And Sangalang, 18 points and 13 boards. Boy, put them together, that's, that's already one team and you just need fillers to get their ball game. But certainly Calvin Abueva, we heard it from uh, from the mayor of Ormoc. People are looking forward to watch Calvin Abueva play in the flesh here at Ormoc one more time. And that's the beauty of it. If you can get double-double consistently mm -hmm. from three guys on your team, you've got to be really happy if you're Coach Topex Robinson. However, they can't count mm -hmm. out Letran, Coach Louis Alas and Kevin Alas. They might not be here right now for this game. But so far, that's not been a problem mm -hmm. for the Knights. They've counted on the, you know, the mighty Mark Cruz, who's playing bigger than his body so far in this tournament. Well, they were able to dispose of a favored FEU Tamarau team. Mark of excellence against FEU, 25 points, 4 assists in 32 minutes. That's how much reliance on the mark of excellence, Mark Cruz of San Juan. He was up against the case of RR uh, Garcia and uh, Terence Romeo, but this guy, is something you watch out for. He might deceive you. you know, he, he looks very young, right out of high school, but surely he, he can he can put in the numbers and create situations for, for the run. Something surely he's learned from his big brother Marvin. Will he play big enough <laughs> to play against and win against arguably the best front line in college basketball? It's the Letran Knights going up against the San Sebastian Stags live from the Superdome here in Ormoc when we return. Stay with us. That's the official lineup for your San Sebastian Golden Stags. Number four, Joven de la Cruz. Number five, John Lester de la Cruz. Number five, Dexter Marquez. Number seven, Calvin Abueva. Number eight, Bobby Dalucana. Number ten, Ian Sangala. Number thirteen, Ronald Pascual. Number 14, by Andy Puesto. Number 15, Michael Merenda. Number 16, Jose Ferrer. Number 17, Anthony Del Rio. Number 18, Joshua Perry. And number 6, Arvin Pico. And both is Topic Robinson. Okay, uh, we can have some hyperbole. 
And now, let's meet the official lineup. And we're uh, introducing the full lineups for both Mitran and San Sebastian. Uh, Professor Mitran, you know, I know the score is even, but they've got an uphill uh, battle ahead of them today without Kevin Alas. They're going to have their hands full uh, for Coleo San Juan de la Plana. I think the last time they were here was in 2008. San Sebastian visited Orbok in 2009. And they were stretched by San Carlos in overtime, but still managed to pull off. And the guys here are just waiting to see the improvement in the game of uh, Calvin Abreva. Of course, for San Juan de Letran, they'll be playing without Kevin Alas. Coach Murat Alas not at the helm as well. Yes. And uh, they, if I'm not mistaken, have about just nine players fielded yep. today. But of course, like what we mentioned earlier, the outstanding play of uh, Mark Cruz as of late. And of course, Almazan, always dependable, Raymond Almazan. So uh, we'll see how far they can go against the Pinatubo Trio and the rest of the San Sebastian Stags. We have uh, tournament director, Joe Lipa. Of course, uh, our mayor of Ormoc City, Mayor Eric Codilla and Councillor Ruben Capahi in center courts to award the plaque of appreciation to both these teams. Uh, PCCL rather, awarding it to the city of Ormoc. After very happy to host the PCCL last year. It didn't visit the uh, PCCL wasn't here, but 2009 was here. We were here in 2009. And, uh, you know, it's such a beautiful place to host such a tournament like this. Basketball crazy are what the people here are. As you can see, the, the stands are filled. Everyone has been waiting for this from, you know, from men uh, we come across in the streets to even little kids, young boys, you know, in the high places. We went to Lake Danao and, you know, the boys there, you know, the young boys there talking to us about Calvin Abueva, what time are they going to play? They even made the trip here. Yes, they even made the trip here. We appreciate them coming out. And of course, they're going to appreciate seeing these two excellent teams from Manila make the trip down to Ormoc City. And we meet our uh, starters. Professor, you're a team, uh, you know, say for example, San Sebastian and Letran, you're, you're not really used to uh, playing in Ormoc City or in, you know, uh, out of town locations. We know that uh, Letran got here a little earlier than San Sebastian did. What are the things you have to take note of when you're playing out of town? Well, one, you have to take care of your stomach. Uh, food has always been a concern, drinking water, then the venue. You must have at least what, three or four shoot arounds to be familiar with the, with the court here. Um, of course, this is at the same venue, which is at uh, the arena in, in Manila. So this, and more, this is close to Araneta. So you have to, to take care of that. Plus, of course, you have to get used to the sleeping quarters. Which is different. And some players, hindi makatulog yan kasi iba yung kwarto, iba yung kama. I don't think the beds are enough to cover the legs of the players. Almasan, I'm sure, had a problem with it. But hey, if Junmar Fajardo and, uh, you know, Justin Abude were able to make do, I'm sure that uh, they find their way as well. Ball is tipped. And ball is with Mark Cruz of Letran. He almost loses it. Noticeably, Abueva will come off the bench for San Sebastian. They have Sangalang. And Pascual, that's two-thirds of the Pinatubo Trio on the floor already. Here's Letran, three-pointer on the way from straight ahead, no good. Almasan with a rebound, puts it back in, no good again, third chance. Oh, oh. Wow, finally gets two points. Well, they're not bodying up on, uh, on Almasan. They're trying to out-jump him, Sangalang trying to get the ball away from uh, Almasan. Antipuesto locks down the fort for... San Sebastian, he'll play point guard to start things off. Sangalang missing early. He gets it back to, to Kyle. Drives in. There's a penetration by Jovit de la Cruz. It's tapped out of bounds. It's the same with the Stags. 15 seconds, the shot clock. Proud you looking at the players. Oh, they're bigger <laughs> the players. players <laughs> Well, uh, they didn't say that about Mark Cruz. And that's Kyle Antipuesto, not down uh, the jumper, but Mark Cruz's game bigger than uh, his frame. Yes, Professor. Sorry. That was a good frame good for Antipuesto. And this is really a different brand you're looking at in terms of point guards and the, the big men. So there's going to be a, oh. a charging foul, an illegal screen on Raymond Almazan early oh, in the ball game. Yes. Antipuesto did a good job selling that call. Yes. 
Well, they don't want to give Mark Cruz the benefit of the way he destroyed FEU the last time out. They're familiar to each other, of course, the rivalry. Well, Lebron was able to pull off that win when the San Sebastian was on a 15 winning game streak. Mm -hmm. And of course, that was with the Tony Dallas. And of course, they also almost played the spoilers mm -hmm. as they met in the final four. As there's a fast break by Letran, and baskets for Kevin Arajal. Kevin makes sure he uh, gets that basket in. 4-2 is the score. Stags with another turnover. Almazan gets it to Mark Cruz. Letran trying to attack. Mark will pull up. 18 feet, no good. Ball is tapped. It will be secured by Jameson Cortez, now with Mark Cruz. Trying to work on Antipuesto. Gets some daylight, drives in, wow, leaves it off. That yes. play. But he was able to attract the defense, and the guy just following him, open for that shot. A squall with a crossover. Good defense there. They get it down to Sangalang. Playing Almasan, bodying up on each other. They're very familiar. Ooh, rejected! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Take it's note of that. Dexter Maikes by Raymond Almasan. Well, he's playing very well here in the PCCL. Take a look at this first. Mark Cruz, the beautiful dish. Cortez knows exactly what to do. The short hook goes in. Pascual for three. No good. Almazan pulls it down. I just love seeing Mark Cruz and Raymond Almazan stand next to each other. <laughs> you know, you're a point guard and you're the center. Sometimes you argue a lot when it comes to positioning, screen. So whenever you see Mark Cruz lecturing Raymond Almazan, it's a sight to behold. Antipuesto will pull up from three. No good. He gets his own miss. Oh. Tries to get down to Mike but that's a turnover. Letran on the break. Whoa, what a Kevin. shot! Oh. Kevin Rakal, four points from him already. And Letran with a blistering start, 8-2 to two to start the first quarter. We'll be right back. Here we see the replay. Dexter Maikes thought he had an opening, but no, nope. not with Raymond Almazan. Yep. There. You know, I, I was watching Raymond Almazan play. Corner of his eye, he knows that Marquez is going to drive in and he's going to get his block. He gave him the first step, kind mm -hmm. of hesitated, uh, wanted to make sure Marquez thought he had the opening mm -hmm. and then he went up and, uh, well, denied that ball, much to the delight of this Ormok City crowd. 8-2, to two. Coach Topex Robinson forced to call an early timeout there. Let's see if he can reset his troops now. Sangalang, top of the key. We get over to Ronald Pascual. Ball's in the hands of Jovet de la Cruz. And that will trickle in. Good movement there of the timeout. Score points for San Sebastian. Here's Letran with the ball now. Oh! There's an opening! There's a bruise but no deuce. Drive there by uh, Kevin Rakal, who we've seen who's very, attra very aggressive rather. And that shot of his Looks like it's very attractive, you know, the, the opening, the As defense the that the uh, Stags are giving him. Well, it, it was first an open thing. The, the, they were playing man for the San Sebastian Stags and there was that opening and just took the guy uh, to school and Rafael very, very active here in the first uh, quarter. Few good men looking mm -hmm. at the nine-man rotation for coach, uh, assistant coach Tino Pinat. Of course, you know that the uh, father and son are in the States, uh, Louis and Kevin. Uh, that's... Um, rare opportunity to train with the LA Slam, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So uh, with Kevin getting better abroad, you know, he's had an excellent season in the NCAA, only looking to get better. The rest of his teammates, they're playing well. Without him, they have a 10 to 4 advantage over the NCAA season 87 first runners up, San Sebastian. Balls with the stags. He gets to Pasquale. He loves that three. Makes it. Oh, oh, oh. Woo. He's really a big time player. The way he moves with his body. And he will shoot that three off that screen. You know, if you guys watch the second game against Embeda in the finals, they lost that game. But in the third quarter of that one, Ronald Pasquale came off screen after screen and knocked down three after three. Oh. Well, the thing was not focused there. Turn over. As Rakal misses the shots. We see the replay here. 
Pasquale knew what he wanted to do as soon as he caught that ball. That good screen put up by Sangalang and the crowd knows Calvin Aveva. Applauding the entry of the beast. They cheer for Calvin. Uh, I was talking to him before the game asking how he thought they would match up against Letran without Kevin Alas. And Calvin, very careful to give us his prediction saying they're still a tough team and that he's going to try his best. His best not good enough on that occasion. He gets blocked. Letran with the ball. Mark Cruz now. 12 left on the shot clock. Asks for a screen. Shot clock down to five. Marcus pulls up. Gets it in. Wow, just using his lightning speed. He's taken three shots, it's made one here. But more importantly, they have a five point advantage over the Stags. Abueva will pull up from 15 feet, in and out. And here comes little old Mark Cruz again. He lulls you to sleep, Mark Cruz does, with that dribbling of his. And then before you know it, He's already stepped back, pulled up, and knocked down a jumper in your face. Mark drops oh. it off to Almazan. You know, really tough to cover, Mark Cruz. He oh, makes Antipuesto think where he's going to go. There you see the jumper. He'll leave you with that lightning quick first step. And then right as you're trying to recover, he'll pull up. A la Marvin Cruz. He looks a little faster than Marvin. Uh, Marvin more looks for the, the pull up. And the resemblance, however, is uncanny as Letran misses. And Abueva throws the baseball pass to his good friend Ronald, but wow. drops it off. Oh. What an assist by uh, Ronald Pascual uh, falling Ronald out Pascual. of bounds, finding Jovit de la Cruz for the layup. Normally, you would have rattled off because you're already deep at the baseline, but not Pascual in that play. Abueva falls to the ground trying to get that basketball as Sam Cortez using his body to protect the leather against Sangalang. Yes, he finds a way to get those two points. Five point advantage here for Letran. They get it down, Sangalang turns. He's met with a triple team, goes up, he's fouled by Almazan and that's two already on the big man as oh. Zam Cortez just decked Calvin Abueva. Mm -hmm. Hey. <laughs> Ronald Pascual trying to calm down Zam. And we know that neither of these two will back down from anyone. Oh. Early on. At, such, uh, at the 409 mark here in the clock. And the thing about Calvin Abueva was he had the look of shock in his face. He had just stepped into the ball game. He was like, whoa, Jam, I didn't know we were playing that game. <laughs> Psychologically try to impose your will on the on the opponents uh, the see if they're gonna you know back down or are they gonna put up a fight on the floor with you well that's NCAA action for you players are very tough very intense very intense and they love to play basketball and they hate to lose no quarters given no quarters taken here for both teams San Juan de Letran with the four point advantage but you know that the stacks are just right there at Sangalang making the most out of the situation down to three points 14 to 11 is the score anthony del rio will take over as the point guard now replacing antipuesto the veteran anthony del rio in his final year here's cruz three-pointer on the way no good for letran almazan again but almazan with a putback well, they're not really bodying up on raymond there's Pasquale with a fadeaway. In, out, in, but finally it comes out. And Mark Cruz will pull it down. Pulls up from three. Short on that attempt. Oh, it's a quick draw for Mark. Here comes Del Rio. Finds Jovit on the side. Gets it back out to Anthony. Trying to find Sangalang downstairs. They know Almazan has two fouls. Abueva with a crossover, losing control there, but he finds teammates. What a spin Whoa, by yes. Jovic de la Cruz, Professor. <laughs> Clearing himself from the defenders. He whirlwinds his way into the lane and finishes with a looper. It's a three-point game. Here we see it. Abueva loses control. Jovic spins away from Mark Cruz, floats it before <laughs> Almazan gets there. And the bucket is good for two. It's a three-point game. Letran leading San Sebastian here in the first quarter.
There we see the happy-go-lucky crowd here in the Armok City Superdome. It is packed to the brim as these uh, fans, basketball lovers from all around Leite walk in. And that kid to the left of your screen in black, you know, one of those uh, children we met, ecotourism future ambassadors. Yep, he swam the uh, length of uh, Lake Donal. <laughs> yes, and they do it regularly as well. And would go and dive for those uh, oversized uh, tahong. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're very, very good kids who are experiencing some amazing basketball action. He's a big Calvin Abueva fan. Sabi niya, kahit po malayo ang Superdome sa amin, kadayo ito. Makita lang si Calvin. And his hero is playing well. He gets the block there. And foul on Alvin Abueva. Calvin. There's the foul, and it looks like it's from three, so Lithuania. Silang ano kay Calvin, ano? Parang walang papatawarin tira yan. Makita niya yung bola. He'll go for it. Lithuania will get, will get three free throws, taking advantage of that Calvin Abueva aggressiveness. Sophomore Dan Carlo Lithuania. And he gets it to go. Again, this... The rotation as far as the guards go for Letran, you might see a couple of names that don't really get a lot of minutes, usually in the NCAA, but they're getting their breaks now. Training for next season, as well as trying to secure for themselves a spot in the Final Four with Kevin out. They're playing well so far, leading uh, the runner-up of the NCAA by five points. Abueva pulls down the board. Here's Del Rio. Gets it to Calvin, top of the key, looking for Sangala. And to get down to Abueva, he's fouled. Oh. And he'll uh, shoot two. Kevin Rafal, last line of defense against Calvin Abueva. Half of the people are watching it on the distant The movement are very crisp inside. They run plays, they know it off the back of their hands, off ball screens, weak side action, very, very uh, crisp, like what you said, Professor. And the players are really athletic and big. Mm -hmm. uh, I was mistaken, it's uh, Michael Miranda who's playing the center position now for San Sebastian, replacing Mythical Five member Ian Sangalang. And Abueva makes two, and it's a three point game. Also, stop that's matching up with uh, Raymond Almosan sitting down, also sitting down Ian Sangalang. On the side of the Sunset of Sunstag. Here's John Cortez stepping on the line there. Good pressure and by Miranda. They'll go the other way in favor of San Sebastian. These people just anticipating the next highlights. We were ooing and eyeing earlier as Ronald Pascual, Ian Sangalang, and Calvin Amueva almost tore down the rim <laughs> during the layup drills. <laughs> they even have to you know, adjust and make sure that it's really tense feet above the ground. I think, <laughs> I think Calvin and Ronald brought it down to nine as Ronald Pascual is short on that three-point attempt. Fading away with a hand in his face, that's how he loves to take them. Here comes Letran. Oh, they, go, they go inside to Mark Cruz. Oh, inside, I'm, inside. I'm sorry, that was Dan uh, Lituania. Here's Abueva. His pass is tipped, he gets it back over to Pascual for three. In and out. Follow up by Del Rio is no good. Here comes Mark Cruz. Lituania. Mark Cruz open in the corner, three pointer, no good. Ronald Pascual gets it over to Calvin Abueva, two on two. Calvin takes it in himself. <laughs> Look at that step, man. <laughs> and if you give him a running start on the open floor, it's almost impossible to stop Calvin Abueva. Here's Jam Cortez, the face-up jump shot. No oh, good. Abueva pulls it down. Run beginning to miss here. The so not working or working against them. Ronald Pascual gets it inside. Miranda a little too strong. They get the other chance. And oh. That one stayed on the rim for about eight years, and then finally. It fell off <laughs> for Jovit de la Cruz. Here comes Mark Cruz to Lithuania. Del Rio on him. Lithuania from 18 feet oh, gets yes. it in. Defense is still lax and they have play the zone and he got a space. And I think that's what the plan is to do. But they, they may not have the athleticism and the firepower, but if they consistently make those shots, they're going to be in the ballgame. 
Miranda with a nice move. He misses that one though. Abueva almost getting the offensive board. Three point lead for Letran. As Mark Cruz struggling with that ball. 23 seconds left in the first. Here's Letuania with the drive. Off to Jam Cortez. Cruz to the corner. Beautiful wow. move by Kevin Rakal, who's been an offensive spark all quarter long, Cross. Well, the ball is getting to him in a position where he's most efficient. Three seconds. Abueva will shoot the three. Back rims it. And that will do it for the first quarter of action. As Letran is leading San Sebastian by five, 22 to 17. We've seen them get chippy early, and we still have three quarters left. We'll be back from Armok City here on Studio 23. Here we see uh, pineapples of Pinyano Ormoc, their pride and joy. It's really different here. No, Professor, yesterday you were telling me it's because of the soil and the weather here mm -hmm. in Ormoc. And it's not yet exported. On, for the record, this thing is not yet exported because consumption here in Ormoc is already sufficient to fill in the supply. Mm. People from Ormoc, they love it as much as me and uh, Professor Randy and now do. And we're bringing home number of these pineapples. Yes, we're, we're leaving all of our clothes here and then filling our suitcases with the chon, sure. chon and pineapples. Whatever <laughs> <laughs> stomach gets something. We'll find out. We'll find out. In the next week, if we don't call any games, that will be why. Second quarter. <laughs> San has possession uh, to start the second quarter. Vitor checks into the game. We get into Calvin. Misses that one on the post. And here comes Lithuania. With Vito on him. Almasan back in the game. He's playing with two fouls. There's Letran. The floater in the middle is no good right there. Andre Pantin missing. Here's Abueva. Running start. Loses the leather. They recover it. Ronald for three. Air ball. And Almasan will secure it. Well, obviously, Letran is trying to slow things down. They want. San Sebastian wants to speed things up. Here's Lituania and Pantin on the handoff. We get to uh, Joel Gabriel. Pantin. Lituania down to Almazan. He gets the open lane. Oh, big That's guy. Awesome. Easy. Coaches and players are looking at the numerous screens provided the players even before the shot is taken. Abueva gets decked a second time. This one <laughs> off the attempt. Here you see Almazan. Gets Calvin in the air. And then at that point, he's just too big for you to stop. Really very patient offense for Letran. Getting them to Sebastian. Ambilis ng kamada. Abueva immediately trying to take advantage of his superior strength and athleticism. Getting fouled two free throws for the Beasts. He makes the first of two as his bandmate Ian Sangalang checks back into the ball game, trying to take advantage, maybe exploit the fact that Almazan has two fouls already for the Knights. Abueva misses the second, and here comes Letran, Lituania, the pesky Vitu pounding him. Almazan, oh, way out. Delorio and uh, Abueva getting at it. Almazan will pull up. Had a good line, but that's no good. Here's Ronald Pasquale on the break. He's got one man to beat. He's fouled. Well, that's the most that uh, Lituania can offer. Ronald Pasquale. He's trying to take away the strong side or making the crossover, mm -hmm. trying to drive him more to the sidelines. But uh, just too strong. Too strong and too athletic was Ronald Pascual still able to get that shot up. Almost went in. Instead, he'll uh, shoot two free throws. Really a tough case there for Lituania. Well, at least half the uh, effort worth it. Pascual missing the first end of his free throw. It's a six-point game, Professor San Sebastian. Not really getting the fluid offense mm -hmm. that we're used to seeing from them. And defensively, they're allowing the run to patiently orchestrate and take the best shots possible from higher percentage area. Pascual gets his own miss and he's fouled again. And, and you know, it's tough. Again, we mentioned earlier the Pinatubo trio, Pascual, Abueva, and Sangalang, they average double-doubles. 
on the daily they get double doubles so you know when they're shooting free throws you have to make sure that you address the fact that they can pull down those offensive boards yep and what's gonna be trouble also for the front they only have nine players you know they can give up as many fouls but they may not have enough players on the bench to fill in later on and finish the ball game and that's gonna be something that we're gonna keep our tabs on try to see if Letran can keep the short rotation competitive against uh, San Sebastian, although so far they're leading Baste by five. 8.22 remaining in the second. Ronald Pascual will take a second free throw. Well, this uh, 2000 Baste is able to put up uh, a championship. Topex Robinson, the coach, belonged to one of the dynasties of San Sebastian mm -hmm. in the Ducal years. And you know, Coach Topex, one of the most passionate coaches we've seen in recent years. Definitely one of the most athletic. I think he can still suit it up. As we see a long shot there. That one missed by Velorio. Abueva steps on the line. Oh no, but it will stay with San Sebastian. Well, on the other end, if you look at assistant coach uh, Tino Pinat. They come from the... High Sox era of Avelino <laughs> Samboy Lim. Yan, if you remember correctly, sila pinat ang hahaba ng mga majors ng Gatuwood. That was the fashion sense then. Well, the, well, the High Sox tried to make a comeback in the last few years, but uh, we don't see it that often anymore. Abueva, whirling, turning, finding uh, some galang inside. Ooh. Cruz, deuce. Ooh. And they are just too good when they get that position on you, Professor. They, they just pummel you and just, you know, tenderize you inside and almasan with two fouls. Ano pa ba magagawa mo? Pwede na niya itira yun eh, but forces it to Ian Sangalang and then look at the situation. They call the foul on Belorio, which is a lucky break for Letran because that would have been the third on Raymond Almazan had it been whistled on him. But Sangalang, a hard worker. Missing that bonus for him. It's just a two-point lead now for Letran, which is why you see Mark Cruz back at the point guard position. Here comes Letran, top of the key, losing the ball. Oh, but they recover it. Oh, it's this gonna count. And Woo. it's gonna count for Andre <laughs> Pantin. He gets the bruise and the deuce, and will make the trip to the line for one. This was a broken play, Professor. Yep. Watch play, he lost it, and Pascual could have handled the leather. And then he goes up against Pamboy Del Rio and makes the shot to foul to move. Anthony Del Rio will uh, be credited for that foul. You know, Ronald Pascual, lumaki yung mate. When you saw that the ball could be in his possession, and he saw Calvin Abueva streaking on the other side, Kialang lost control. Let's see what Pantin can do from the 15-foot line. Andre Pantin. Converts. It is good. And it's now a five-point lead for San Juan de Letran. And that has really kept the stack at bay with those types of incursions and situations for them. Standing stacks parang okay. It's not a regular Letran squad that we're facing. No Kevin Alas. Scouting, you know, really goes out the window when you're facing a team that's missing a key piece. You know, Kevin, the great player that he is, you know, leading this team not only in points, but you know, also in assists. And, you know, vocally as well, you get almost a little bit of everything from Alas. So when you take him out, you're left with a team that you don't know how to deal with. Yep. Big part of the puzzle not there. It's going to be a different look for them. And sometimes, you know, that's a disadvantage if you're a team without your main guy. But if you're playing like Letran is playing now, you use it as a way to trick your opponents, kumbaga. Oh, but they're playing with less pressure. Almazan gets it to Pantin, drives inside, oh, uses oh, the left oh, hand. Oh, wow, <laughs> what a shot that was. Who would have thunk that as oh, San Sebastian gets an easy layup. Jovet de la Cruz was streaking on the other side. They're so confident and athletic about that. Tutuwa ka po sa tira mo, kung itira sa tira mo, kung itira ng fast break eh. Pero bakit hindi matutuwa si Andre Pantin on that shot with the offhand against Sangalang. A little fist bump to boot. 
Five point advantage for the blue shirts. So far, they've dictated the tempo here in the first half of uh, Nico. And so Sebastian has contented himself biting the dust. No runs here so far for San Sebastian to effectively bring down this lead or even tie the ball game. Ronald Pascual has put in some offense, so has Calvin Abueva, but not really, you know, the rhythm and the swagger that we're used to seeing from them. Their legs not under them yet. Cruz for three, short again. And here comes De La Cruz, running. Oh, look at the pressure put up by Mark Cruz in that play. This time he loses control. Mark Cruz upset him at himself for missing that shot, but his defensive effort will get them the ball back. Pascual comes back for San Sebastian. And maybe Coach Topek seeing the score. It's a five-point game, but it could easily be a wider margin for Letran, the way his tags are just sort of lumbering up and down the court, Professor. Yep. Not been able to put scores in bundles. And no stop that really for Letran. They've been able to score on every three possessions. Here's Jam Cortez finding a way inside. Again. Good. So some candy shot for Letran working well. Abueva gambled with a steal, and then Zam Cortez just turned on the Jets. Here's Pascual missing that one. Okay, no offensive board there for San Sebastian. Almasan taking care of business. They are one and done. And uh, they're quick as well to pull the trigger on their shots. It's Almazan just piling it on. And Coach Topex Robinson says, wait a second, let me talk to my boys. 33-24, Knights ahead of the Stags. We'll be right back. Back inside the Superdome, there you see the City Sports Coordinator, Mr. Al Aberca, and members of the local media here in Armok City, of course, all coming to the event, mm -hmm. as you call it, Professor. Yep, the event on a holiday. Could not get any better with outstanding collegiate basketball talent making their way down to Armok City. And what a place it is as well. We've been here the last few days. And, you know, we've had the time of our lives. We've been working uh, two games a day, but it doesn't feel like work at all. Yep. You know, we look forward to 6 p.m. and say, hey, it's going to be a big game. Big uh, games, actually, not just a big game. And so far, the game of Letran shining here over San Sebastian. A little bit stunned here for the Stags. Slow-footed here. Yung Letran, parang walang, walang, walang pressure na daladala sa katawan nila. Mm -hmm. yung, yung San Sebastian, parang, no, 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 we have to be on track. Oh, was that? Oh, we have Almazan. Raymond Almazan is bleeding, and you, you know this is this is the Carl Malone rule, is what they say. Every mm -hmm. time a player is gushing out blood, he has to the training. Actually, the training staff has a few seconds to try and contain it, but if they can't, he, he has to sit down until that blood stops gushing. So the training staff from the Tran taking care of him. Here's a Bueva. Ball is with the Stags. Sangalang inside. Muscles his way in. And that's why he's in the mythical five. Yep. Even the health defense could not stop him. Last ng katawan niya. Kala ko papayat-payat na ganyan. But he's a canny left-handed shot. They wanted the points off the timeout. They got it. Oh! Sangalang with the steal. The breakaway. No one beats. Oh, and he yeah. finishes with the left hand. For a while, the crowd were thinking, oh, will he do it? We okay. haven't seen one. And you know, the thing about Ian Sangalang is put him on any other team and he'd be a star. Well, he's a star for the Stags, but sometimes, you know, everyone talks about Abueva and Pascual. But, you know, Sangalang, such comfort as there's a foul on the play, such comfort with that third option, the role that he plays. He doesn't mind being second, third fiddle. The other guys, as long as he gets the job done inside. And he gets the job done on this one. Belorio, no just, chance just at Moses all. Away. I mean, you can see it in Belorio's face. He was just help, help, <laughs> treading <laughs> what Ian Sangalang was about to do. Two points are in for Ian. Mark Cruz with a leather. Pantin now. They swing the ball. Well, the off, off the ball There's foul. An offensive foul. I think it might go on Belorio. <laughs> Here we see that steal by Sangalang. Wound up for what looked like it was going to be a dunk, but he played it safe. Mm -hmm. We've seen missed dunks throughout our stay here in Armok, yes. Professor. I was not about to make one for 
And of course, D. Two points, nevertheless. 439, still a five point advantage for Letran. Who, like what you said, playing with nothing to lose and everything to gain. And it's to their advantage so far. Vito, what a crossover. Beautiful drop pass to Calvin Abueva, who is yet to uh, score so far in a field goal. Here comes Letran. They take the jump shot. No good. Abueva will pull it down. People asking for a double dribble, at least the Letran bench is, but uh, he was fouled, fouled first. And I said, that's going to be a penalty situation. Because that was big. Calvin's not going to shoot from that spot. Zam Cortez, again, you know, you see the two of them uh, exchanging words there. <laughs> Earlier in the first, oh, got tangled. tangled is a way to nicely put what <laughs> Zam Cortez did to Calvin Abueva. In another sport, it would be called a, la a linebacker tackle mm -hmm. or a takedown if you're into martial arts <laughs> in basketball it's called a foul <laughs> 28 to 33 of Weva misses the first one with 410 left in the second and two, uh, miss, free two miss free throws for Calvin Abueva you know, I was just gonna say professor sometimes if you're struggling with the field goals if you see that basketball go in as we see waits there's an unsportsmanlike foul Sandalan called for it he had his hands up, so he played He played it well after he committed it. He looked innocent to us by the time we made our, you know, our sights cross over to him. But what he did beforehand is the reason why Mark Cruz is on the line for two. So two feet shots, the ball possession here for Letran. Staving off time after time, incursions of uh, San Sebastian to even and come close to this deficit. And here's Mark Cruz. Amazing job by our camera crew today and you know the past few days as well There's a Discussion as to who should take the free throw. What's the rule on this professor? Well, he was the one who was given the foul so He's supposed to be the designated free throw shooter the switch was there and you know why there was a intended switch in favor <laughs> of Mark Cruz <laughs> It's because Steven Kudal who is taking the shots Probably not as good a free throw shooter as Mark Cruz is. And he misses two there. It's very evident. So if you're a coach, you can pick who will take the uh, two free throws only if it's a technical foul. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there was an aggrieved party. Then uh, that person should take the free throw. Tapped out, here comes Abueva. Passes it down. Sangala wow. lays it in with the left hand. So just like in the script, your big man running down the floor. Mm -hmm. Abueva giving it the ball to Ian. And Abu you know, Abueva, we mentioned that he's almost unstoppable on the open floor, but when he sees a streaking teammate with better position, he never is hesitant to give that up as we see a beautiful spin cycle move by Rahal. Rahal is so efficient here. He's just kept the trunk above waters here. Oh, and we have another unsportsmanlike foul. Returning the favor. Here we see Calvin Abueva, in my opinion, spare the life of poor Mark Cruz. Because if Calvin went all the way on that one, we don't know where we'd find Mark. <laughs> so we're getting physical here. Uh, the low post, you know, Pudal, this time committing the unsportsmanlike foul. Sending Ian Sangalang to the free throw line. So it's I take one, I give one. Eye for an eye. Unsportsmanlike foul for an unsportsmanlike foul. Let's see if the free throws, though, are a different result for Ian Sangalang. He makes the first. And, you know, a lot of people here in Ormok, they might not be used to seeing these many, you know, this many unsportsmanlike fouls, but those of us who follow. In the NCAA, or these two teams in particular, know that they're very passionate, they're very physical when it comes to their brand of basketball. One of two for Sangalang. The lead is down to four. There you see Coach Tino Pinat taking over for Coach Louis Alas. Again, not with us here, and neither is Kevin. They're in Los Angeles. San Sebastian with the possession. Alvin Abueva to Jovit to Ronald Pasqual. The smaller Mark Cruz on him. He drives in, gives it up to Abueva. Free throw, lane, jump shot, no goods. 
And here comes Jam Cortez on the opposite side. Here's Letran. Crossover by Jam Cortez. He loses that ball. They have possession still though. Letran is blocked by both of Weber oh, and Pascual. Yes, he gets it. But Jam Cortez with a bruise and the deuce recovering the loose ball. Very gritty Letran squad we're looking at here. They don't look very intimidated. They want to move inside. There's a block. And then the loose ball. Look at Cortez just hanging around. Pushing it in. Gabawan was rejected there. You know what they say, jumpers will jump. And that's exactly what both Pascual and uh, Abueva did to block Gabawan. However, when Pascual did it again against Cortez, unsuccessful. He gave up the foul and the hoop. Cortez good on the free throw. It's a seven-point game with 3.06 left. So this... Not what a lot of people expected so far, mm -hmm. Professor. Pascual off the, off the screen with a three, no good. He loves that curl. Always looks for it. Abueva wide open for three, yes. gets it. Abueva, three. If you, don't, you cannot prevent the pass to Abueva, he's really going to score on you and he heats up. He can't be in trouble. And when he heats up, he heats up quick. He gave us a look. He gave us a little tongue wag. And Calvin might just make his presence felt even more in this game. Here's Letran. That's a travel if I've ever seen one. And we'll go the other way. It's a forced issue for Letran. Here's that three-pointer by Calvin. The Letran defense practically daring Calvin to take that shot. He will give the open look. Otasi Bashan has not been hitting the three-pointers as consistently as they wanted to here in the first half. Here comes Baste, Abueva, again! Wide open there, chooses not to take the three, instead drives in against Jam Cortez, oh! but he loses, loses the, the basketball. Thinking of too many things one time. They're really oh, trying to one-up each other. Abueva says, that was my fault. As Almasan checks back in, that gash on his left arm, you see it all bandaged up now. We told you it was physical. Almazan will take the jump shot from free throw range and miss. Abueva, Sangalang, cherry picking. Mark Cruz and the rest of Letran trying to stop him. Almazan was there as well. Wow. He missed it and there's a jump ball. Oh, De La Cruz, what an effort for him. But this able to get the ball and force a jump ball. Unfortunately for San Sebastian, possession arrow in favor of Letran. We're inside the final two minutes of the first half. Coach Topex Robinson still looking Good like track. everything's in control. It's just a four-point deficit they're facing. I miss his long sleeves, man. <laughs> <laughs> the semifinals when he played it against Letran in a deciding game number two. Well, he was in long sleeves and they won. Maybe there's a little bit of luck. No luck there, however, for oh, Al again. Almazan. Bruce Deuce is too big and too powerful. You know, hard-working front line of Letran. Maybe they don't have the names, but they've, they've certainly worked themselves here. There's Kevin Akal again successfully making it to the cup. It rolls out and then against three mm -hmm. San Sebastian rebounders, Almazan. The internet are pushing out Almazan from outside of the area. They were trying to out-jump again. As you said, jumpers will always be jumpers. So they did think about pushing first your opponent. They tried of locking the ball from the top and the ball Unfortunately for San Sebastian, didn't roll out immediately when the jump was made by Abueva and, uh, and Pascual. And now uh, Almazan has a three-point play opportunity, cashes in. At bay, you know, San Juan de Letran, good job here. It went down to as low as three, but it's working between five and seven now. Coach Topex calls on Dexter Maiquez as there's a misunderstanding between Abueva and De La Cruz. Substitution number 10 out for Dexter Maiquez. Ian Sangalang will uh, move Abueva to the bench. So will Calvin Abueva. Coach Topex really willing his, uh, his players. Couldn't get that the formula, that five that would consistently and constantly put the pressure on the front and take away some of this mighty seven point advantage the Knights have over the Stags. Here comes Letran. Jump shots from top of the key. 
Again, the one. Again, Sam Cortez with the rebound. Two hit on the knocks out. They get the offensive board. As we see a hard collision, no call. I'm surprised there as <laughs> Balukanag was blocked by Almazan. They make their way to the other side of the floor. Here comes Letran. Fader, drifter, not necessarily the best shot available, but oh, Joel Gabriel oh, fetches the foul and will head to the line for two. Here you see that the effort from Raymond Almazan to chase down that ball. It was a let-go situation. Joel Gabriel did a good job making the most of the situation he was in. Fetching the foul, he now has a chance to make this a double-digit game and does so. It's the biggest lead here for Letran. 44 to 34. NCAA foul was saying, hmm. It's a different situation. This is without Kevin Alas. Exactly. No Louis 40, Alas. 41.1 seconds left. Never give in, never give up. Those are the words on the backs of the Letran boys' jerseys. No last names for them. It's all about the name on the front. It's all about not giving up. Here's Ronald Pasquale. In and out, that ball cleaned the rim. But San Sebastian gets the rebound. Wow. Cooking hand, quite a cookie jar for Kevin Rakal. Bobby Balokana will make his way to the free throw line for two free throws. 28 seconds remaining. So Balokana again. And uh, Coach Topex Robinson trying to find a spark off the bench. You know, that energy that sometimes you find from the unlikeliest of people. That's what he's in search for. And get your starters a perspective, put them on the bench, and see, identify what's going on and what's going wrong for you. And they need better free throw shooting in this game for San Sebastian. They're down by 11 points. And those are two missed free throws. Another pair of free throws missed by Baste as we enter the final 20 seconds of the first half. What a pass inside. Oh. A drop it off to Almazan, and that's another three point play opportunity. Great effort there from Lithuania, who gave it to Kevin Rakal. And then Raymond Almazan with a finish. Oh, shot chart here. A lot of them inside the shaded area for Letran. They're not really looking to take the perimeter jumpers. They try to efficiently work the ball inside. It's Almazan in spite of the two fouls. Still very much active and daring. The big fellas, of course, Sangalang is not on the floor for San Sebastian and that's a big plus for them erecting a 13 point advantage maybe 14 and we mentioned earlier that the Pinatubo trio quite possibly making up one of the toughest front lines in all of college basketball well they're being dominated on the inside by Letran final 10 seconds now Ronald Pascual will milk this clock he shoots a 3 good line but it's no good and time will expire as oh, almost. Letran almost gets another three-pointer from way out there. 47 to 34. The short-handed Letran Knights are ahead by 13 against the NCAA runner-ups. Winner goes to the final four. Halftime in the second half after this. Two down, two to go. That rings in our Haynes halfway mark. America's leading underwear brand. We take a look at the statistics. Nico Ramos and the Professor Randy Sakdalan with you guys covering Letran and San Sebastian at the half. The stats tell the story, Professor. Well, Letran really taking a early jump. Field goal shooting 9 of 13, 8 of 19 for San Sebastian. Free throws, seven markers over San Sebastian. The stars and one. Uh, the Letran rebounds 23 to 18, slightly ahead on the assist department, but with a lot more urgency than Letran night. They were more efficient in breaking down the defense on San Sebastian. That was your master halftime report. Leave all and dark skin behind now available in six peso sachets. The aggressiveness of Letran really making a world of difference for them in that first half. Very, very patient in breaking the defense. And then you see the tough defensive side of Letran. Not giving up. Shot we have a uh, ball out of bounds. We will stay with Bastet. Calvin Abueva tried his darndest to get through there. But just too much defense from Letran. They're getting physical. Ian Sangalang. Yeah. That's the strong side, the left side. 
going to the back. Falling, drifting to the left, and yet still finding the backboard and banking it in. It's just an 11 point lead now for Letran. Zam Cortez, no good. Almazan has a Bueva and an arm lock. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just falling everywhere here, Prof. And, and they don't mind. I, mean, I, I guess they're so used to it. Otherwise, they become big on the young guys. They know. Alam nila ng laban natin sa NCAA. Look at how Almazan and Abueva. Look at them. Look at that. I mean, Almazan pulling Calvin Abueva and all Abue over the court. And Abueva not letting go. Also, He's keeping his armpit around the arm of uh, keeping the arm of uh, Almazan and as soon as the whistle was called the both of them just walked away like nothing happened here's Jam Cortez wide open mm, there yeah. and again inside basket for the Tran so efficient in this ball game they found the opening and they get two points here's Sangalang trying to work on Almazan same spot and with that left hand he finds the board again last you know, he just knows how to operate on the inside, you know, which is one of the reasons why he gets double-digit points. Sometimes the ball doesn't really go to him because it goes to Pascual and Abueva, but every time he receives it down low, he knows what to do. He's so strong. Here we see it again, Professor. Walk us through this. Almasan just mowed out of it and he creates the space, taking the lead and the basket. The strength of Ian Sangalang, not something a lot of people talk about. Because he may not look like the strongest person on the courts, but I bet you he's one of them. As there's a foul. Miranda will get called for that one. There you see Michael Miranda, backup center for San Sebastian. Balls with Letran now, Jam Cortez. Miranda on him. They get it out to Mark Cruz. They swing the basketball. Trying to find some offense for three from straight away. That's a miss by Joel Gabriel. Here comes the beast. Wow. Straight away, Bruce Deuce. And that's what he does best, Professor Randy. You know, you'd be scared the way he was sprinting and leaping. Ball number 19. And the urgency here, very much evident. Topex did talk to them a lot of things and they need to recover here quick. And he is just a freight train on the break. You know, like what I said earlier, you do not give Calvin Abueva a running start on the open court. Bilis, ang lakas ng pasok niya, and you know the defense just could not match it. Just like you know, one of those players that we've seen time and time again who can finish on the break, but Calvin Abueva able to do so much more than just that because of his athleticism, his strength. But they have, we haven't seen the court to court thing. Oh, Almasan in the Miranda. Jump ball. Second ball for just a jump on this one. Letran will get the possession. Break for the Knights. Still holding a lead, 49 to 40. Nine point difference, 8.02 left in the third. They've been getting solid play on the inside so far. Again, all of this without Kevin Alas, but it's not a problem. And there's another unsportsmanlike foul. Someone fell to the floor. Miranda drawing that one from Almazan. And that is his third, if I'm not mistaken. Well, Value-wise, San Sebastian got the better end of that deal. But the value of Almazan certainly greater than that of Miranda. Well, I'm mistaken there. That's only Almazan's second foul. I thought he had two already in the second half. Coach Peanut talking to Raymond. Heads a play here. You can't be over emotional about the situation. Miranda's gonna get her goat. Miranda's smart enough to really sell that. Mm -hmm. You know, when Almazan raised that hand, no question there were. In Kumuga sa Tagalog, nagbibigayan mm -hmm. kanina pa. That's just how they play. But Miranda, yep. two free throws made by Miranda. The lead is down to seven, so chipping away from mm -hmm. that uh, double-digit deficit to begin the third period. And they're getting points that are not from the big three, so that's always a bonus. Mm -hmm. That's always something you're thankful for for Coach Topex Robinson. Sangalang and Almazan going at it. Now one out of bounds. It will stay with... San Sebastian. Nobody's backing down here. <laughs> Nico. 
You know, let me tell you, Professor, sometimes, you know, a lot of us broadcasters wish that we were in the shoes of the players. Not in this case, <laughs> as Abueva barrels in and draws the foul. Well, this is a treat, really, for the Ormoc people. This is the way they do things in the NCAA. Mm. That's absolutely correct. They grind, they push, they pull. Whatever it takes to get the upper hand. And these players are so passionate about the game. They hate losing so much. Na kahit na on paper, mukha ang dehado. Aim starts, everything is equalized because of the fire. Isang bola lang pinaglalabanan mm -hmm. niyan. Remember, this two, two and three in the elimination round of the NCAA. Twice to beat for San Sebastian Letran. Really stretching the stags before arranging that final showdown against San Beda. So, alam mo, hindi walang love loss sa dalawang to. No? From the elimination round, Letran yung unang tumalo mm -hmm. sa Boston after that 15-game 15 15 game win. win streak. Yep. Tapos, sila pa nagtama sa ano. So, alam mo, may, may konting bad blood sa laro yan. Eh. Letran almost spoiling the party. The stags, yes. Uh, they forced a deciding second game. So, Letran trying to prove that they do you have San Sebastian's number? San Sebastian, on the other hand, trying to book a rematch with San Beda in the final four. Here comes Abueva, open court. Wow. He, he was the fastest actually a little wide, but he was able to retrieve it. And the lead is down to three. And that uh, forces Letran to call time. We will see it again. Here's the replay for you. Ronald Pascual, they know each other so well from when they were just little kids playing ball. And man, do they know how to play it. And play it well they do. Three-point lead for Letran. We'll be right back. <laughs> On your screens, we see youth leadership. Miss Corinne Coro, or should I say President Corinne Coro of the Sangguniang Kabataan here in Ormoc. She's the federal president, mm -hmm. Professor. Yep. And they're here. It's a holiday. No school. And why not? It's an event here in Armor. Mm -hmm. And we told you, this is the big draw. And uh, so far, these two teams making it worth it for all these people inside the Superdome. People on the stage, you see that behind the basket there. Pushing, shoving, trying to find, you know, just a crease to see this game. And what a game it is to, you know, watch and be able to see live. We're fortunate to be able to do so. Nico Ramos. And uh, the professor Randy Sakdalan calling the action for you. Here's Letran. Balls with Rakal. He drives in. Almost another mm. fast break opportunity for Baste there. Well, they're in a 2 3 zone here oh, for Baste. Oh, Letran is not just oh. looking to drive in. And uh, Dequesto thought he had a lock on that uh, steal. Oh, oh, Letran has not bought a basket for some time now, Nico. And. Slowly, they really chip on and just go away with lead for San Sebastian. Those exchanges between uh, Almazan and Miranda and Almazan and Sangalang seem to have slowed down the Letran momentum so far. There's Rahal with a wild floater, no good. Sam Cortez secures the offensive board and he gets it out to Lituania. They start again, 15 on the 24. Here's Rakal. They swing the basketball. Draw pass. No good. And here comes Cabueva to Pascual. That one tapped out. Great defensive effort there by Kevin Rakal. He's been everywhere today. Rakal gets it again. They drop it off. Oh. That one missed by Gabawan. Oh, Rakal really, really working extra hard. His effort, you can't deny it. And it's paying dividends for uh, Coach Dino Pinat. As he will step to the line for two. Here you see it. There's the miss by Gabawan. He will get the offensive rebound. And then the foul on the beast, Calvin Abueva. Abueva and Pascual had almost a highlight mm -hmm. on the other end if it weren't for Rakal. He was in the middle, Rakal. So that he knew that going to be a handoff from Abueva to uh, Pascual. And he was there to spoil the party. And now is padding the Letran lead. It's at four, now at five. No frills, blue collared worker, Kevin Rakal for Letran. So here comes Paste, still trailing, although they're playing better here in the second half. 
Abueva drives inside, met by Almazan up top and rejected. Rakal is running for Letran. Lituania pulls up, yep. makes it. An assist coming from Rakal. Lituania. A few good men making the right stops here. Good decision making for Letran. So it may not be the Kevin that they're used to helping them out. Alas is not here, but Rakal. Again, see him tap the ball to his side, could not really clear the rebound against Calvin. He's doing his part. 46 to 53. Almazan to Rakal. He swings it. Lithuania now. Inside the jam, Cortez off the board, no go. Almazan with the offensive board. Yep. And Jam Cortez swiping Calvin Abueva down. And he got caught up in that battle for the rebound. Wow. It's just war out there between Letran and Tontibatkan. And you see it, like in the face of Cortez, in the face of Abueva. It's just another day in the office yeah. for these guys. No emotions, it seems to them. This is the brand of basketball that they play. Sangalan trapped there. Pascual for three. Makes it. Uh -huh. wow, that's going to ease things up with a three point shot of Pascual. Six points is the difference. They go to Cortez in the post. Miranda guarding him. They swing out the ball. Akal. Open three on the side for Lithuania. No good. Pascual to Abueva, oh. mishandles it, gets it and into Sangalang yes. for the basket. Wow. The three are making the most out of it, almost a botch play for them. Mm -hmm. but the composure, realizing where the other guys are staying. They know each other, talking about you know the Pinatuba trio, they know each other so well from playing with each other for so long that sometimes Ninan Lakilan Makita. And they just know where he's gonna go. That's gonna be offensive foul. Forcing the issue on Lituania. Trying to do a little too much on that one. Here we see it. Antipueso with a great pass to Pascual. Touch pass to Abueva. And then the shovel pass into Ian Sangalang for the two points. He's facing Milano. Hindi sila magkakagulo sa isang side. They would take that spot and really the trail like a tripod in that play. And they're so un unselfish as well, trusting each other so much. They've been through so many battles together. And that's exactly what this game is. Letran is playing well, despite being shorthanded, keeping this favored San Sebastian wow. team at bay. But Ian Sangalang. Ang galing talaga. Ito may basa niya ng curl, no? Tunali nga ating guwari niya. Dugito pa sa strong side niya. Dao, two points out, the closest. They've got it here in the third. You know, we see a lot of the players who were eliminated from the PCCL, but we saw them in action a couple of days ago and yesterday, here in attendance watching this game. You know, the big men we saw from uh, Iloilo, from Cebu, they've got a lot to learn from Ian Sangalang. Oh, another turnover here against Letran. It's not helping their cause. Here it is, watch it. I mean, he's, he reads the defense, backs him down, and then goes to his strong side. Yep, he overplays his kaliwa, but when he hits it, he Really smart player. Ian Sangalang. They have the basketball now with a chance to tie or take the lead. Abueva against Cortez. They've been going at it all game long. One hand oh, floater and the tongue is out for the beast. This is so easy for him. That kind of a play. You don't put enough pressure on uh, Calvin Abueva. It's a tight game. And I think if there's anything that players in the NCAA have learned, not really the best idea to aggravate Calvin Abueva as there's a block and here's a three-point attempt from Letran. No good there for Andre Pantin. San Sebastian can take the lead. Pascual open for three from the corner. Cortez will pull down the miss. They get it to Mark Cruz. Mark will set up the offense with 16 seconds left. Ball in the hands wow. of Jam Cortez. Again, they bailed themselves out of it. They have the lead again for Letran. He's played well so far, uh, Professor. No, not staggering numbers, but no very solid. Indeed, fancy you tira ng Letran, but very effective. Sangalang working again on the inside, and there's another unsportsmanlike foul. This time it goes against Joel Gabriel. This is not looking any pretty. Yeah, I know. Anytime you get crowned the MVP, 
of the league and you play as aggressively as Calvin Abueva does, there's a target on your back. Here you see that crossover and then the pull-up one-hand floater Woo! from Calvin Abueva. Latran cannot lose its composure here and just trying to get the goat of Abueva or Sangana. The and there's a warning on Coach Tino Pinat taking over the reins here for the Knights in place of uh, Coach Louis Alas. He was pointing out that flop yung didn't want to flop. He was really good. He was just flopping and then he was going to big. Flop or not, both teams have taken a lot of shots. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm not talking about shots of the baskets, but, you know. <laughs> they've taken and they've given their own share so far, Professor. Two free throws made by Calvin Abueva. Stakes are higher now. Second half. You see the urgency for both teams. So what was once a 13-point lead, twice now. Tied ball game here in the third of 57. Pascual will go down to Sangalang. Feels like no one can guard him there. Can be hit? Sangalang finds the space. No good. Maikes misses as well. And Zan Cortez secures the rebound. Let me tell you, Belorio was bailed out there. Sangalang almost had another two points. Mm -hmm. Here's Letran, three-point attempt. That one is short for Gabriel. Well, not consistent from the three-point area, Letran. That's why things are really clogging inside. So 133 here, Professor. San Sebastian, after all of that, has a chance to take the lead to end the third. Here's Abueva inside. Finds oh, Sangalang, but that one tapped out. A good coverage there by Gabriel. Looking that there's going to be an extra pass and a drop down. Six and seconds to shoot for San Sebastian. We mentioned earlier na kilalang kilala ng San Sebastian ng isa't isa, but Letran also knows them quite well. Mm -hmm. Ronald Pascual for three with a hand in his face. No good. Abueva tried to tip it in. No go. Pascual on the inside. Blocked. It's getting rough oh, in there. Oh, 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 oh. You know, crowd appreciating the action. No backing down. You see bodies hitting each other. I mean, watch it here. Ronald Pascual goes in. Boom. Uh, Look go. clean to me. Good job by the officiating crew there. We have a timeout on the floor. It's a tie ball game with 109 left. We'll be right back. Here inside the Superdome of Ormoc City, there you see the packed crowd here, Professor. Father Roy, of course, there you see him, that handsome man. Thank you very much for taking care of us, hosting us. Tournament director, Coach Joe Lipa as well, enjoying the action today. And Mr. Frank Gusi, the athletic director of San Sebastian. Well, he's smiling for Mr. Frank Guzzi. His team is cool. He's playing very well here compared to two quarters They've against Letran. They've woken up. Coach Topex Robinson squad. It's back in the thick of things. Maikez losing the leather. Here comes John Cortez. All alone, he gets chased wow, down. Yes. Yeah. But he's he hurt. Taking it strong, no hesitation. Kahit ato yung nakadilaw na humahabol sa kanya, just focus on what to do. Here comes San Sebastian. They almost lose it there. Sangalang in the post. He does lose it eventually. And Jam Cortez has been everywhere today. Mm -hmm. Mark Cruz on the crossover. Gets the ball outside to Pantin. Back to Cruz. Here's Pantin looking for Cortez inside. They find him. But there's going to be a foul on the inside. It's going to be on Calvin Holding Abueva. On. Holding on. Penalty situation. So Letran able to prevent a takeover here in the third by San Sebastian, 29.7 seconds. They hold off the Stags, who have tied this ball game twice already, mm -hmm. despite trailing by 13 earlier. So two free throws will be awarded to Jonathan Belorio. Jonathan Belorio, we we'll go to the line, try to pad this two-point advantage that Letran has. Oh, missed two of two earlier. He misses that one again. So that's three straight missed free throws for Jonathan Delorio. But two more plays coming up here. 29.7 seconds. Tail end of the third period. 
A penalty situation for both teams. We'll see if either of them try to take advantage and go aggressively to the inside. Belorio makes that one. And it's a three-point game. So San Sebastian making their run, but Letran once again playing well enough to keep them at bay. Here's Abueva, the floater off the board, it's no good. Belorio with the rebound. And Mark Cruz falls to the floor. Got it from Abueva. He is talking to the referee. <laughs> Pulls up for three. That is no good. And the quarter is up. And people are falling to the floor. There's pushing, there's pulling, there's shoving. And there's only a three point difference after all of that. The payoff period is up next. San Sebastian and Letran going hard at it to enter the final four. We'll be back here on Suyo 23. Here you see the lovely place where me and Professor Randy are checked in, the Oromok City Food Park. You know, the food here in Oromok has been nothing short of great, Professor. We've been really enjoying ourselves. We've been there twice. In the last three hours. <laughs> <laughs> we go at least an average of six times a day. <laughs> what do you think we do in between games? Quick cooking. <laughs> the payoff period is set to begin with uh, the stags of San Sebastian College Recoletos trailing the San Juan Colegio of the San Juan de Letran Knights by 3, 57 to 60 Sangalang gets the ball there Pumi Pihit gets it over to Abueva with a teardrop the bruise, the deuce, the stare down and he has another free throw and Abueva and Mark Cruz at it you know, a lot of times the cameras catch Calvin Abueva with a smile on his face. I think he's probably the best in all of college basketball at changing from intimidating game face to smile for the cameras. Never na huhuli, yung stare down there. When, you know, he's getting at it with another player, obviously, you know, there's a different facial expression. But every time he's on camera, he's got that smile. Yep. He can't be the villain on camera. <laughs> That's the last thing you want to do. Of course, your, your relatives will be saying, oh, put on a smile. Well, hero or villain, a lot of people here in Ormok City have been waiting for him. And Ronald Pascual and the rest of the Stags to go up against this Letran team. Here's Cortez. They've been running that play over and over again. And Cortez has been making the Stags pay. Cruz in the corner. Almazan. Good defense so far by the Stags. And they force a shot clock violation. Unable to replicate. Unable to move the ball. So ominous here. San Sebastian able to come abreast of the uh, the three point play of Abueva. One good stop. Opportunity for them to take over. Take the lead. And they've tied the basketball game three times now since trailing by as much as 13. All three times they weren't able to grab the lead. They have a chance here. Pasquale will shoot it from three. That one tapped. Oh, it'll get it back. But Pasquale tips it over to himself. He finds Sangalang. Abueva, another teardrop. He's fouled again. And this time he'll take two free throws. Oh, benefit of the doubt there. And the more established player given the benefit of Abueva. Well, they have to contend and contest that shot by Calvin Abueva. He does have that teardrop from that spot. So aside from finishing strong on the break, you know, when you, you put a guy in between him and the basket, he goes to that teardrop. But still, no lead yet for San Sebastian. Abueva missing on the first end of his free throw. Very elusive situation favoring San Sebastian. Just 54 seconds have passed here in the fourth quarter. Abueva, another chance to give the Stags the lead. Finally. This time he gets it. So after all is said and done, Coach, uh, Professor, they've completed the comeback and now lead Letran by one. Here come the Knights. Pantin. Escapes, gets it over to Marvin too. Mark Cruz open oh, for yes. three. They've been wanting that shot for a long, long time. 
We mentioned earlier how the Spitfire Guard can score at will. So you don't really want to leave him open. Maikez on the inside, find some daylight, and Almasan with another foul. Well, it doesn't look pretty, but he, they get the foul. Two free throws for San Sebastian. Here you see, it was a broken play. Pantin jumped for no reason and then found Mark Cruz in the side. Buries a three-pointer. He was really set up for that play. He wasn't at the top and he was really at the corner looking for it. Looking almost exactly like his big brother Marvin. Pati yung ano eh, yung shirt on the inside, under the jersey. Except Caliwete si Marvin, kanan si Mark. They're both as effective, so when you leave them wide open. So we have a change of the guards here, literally. Anthony Del Rio sits down. Calante Puesto, who started the game, checks back in. So it's another tied ball game. 8.29 left. Looks like it's going to be tough all the way through the end. Ooh, here's Mark. That was tall. <laughs> High. Dito sa bisaya tawag ng taasman. I'm not even going to touch on the tall joke, Professor. But uh, the 5 6. Mark Crew is not able to reach it there. And the thing is, it was a turnover. You give San Sebastian another opportunity. It wasn't even a forced turnover against Letran. And the thing about Baste is that they are a very streaky team. So if you give them the momentum, mm -hmm. they find ways to get on the break and score. And really, they do it so quickly, so, in so lethal fashion. But uh, so far, San Sebastian, they'll take these opportunities from the line as Letran fouls and fouls possession after possession. Here's Pascual. They like that play. He gets it in. They like that play setting up Pascual at the corner. And that's his sweet spot. You know, if you leave him open in the corner or straight away off that curl, he will make you pay more times than he won't. And uh, Letran pulling out their wallets there. There's the block, and here they are on the break. Pascual, oh, Juan yeah. Puesto. That was long. Now, uh, again, was too tall. Yes. And the player not tall enough. And the pass was way ahead for Antipuesto to field. Here you see Antipuesto with the assist, though. Ronald Pascual, he will not hesitate, Professor. Ito mo nakagad na ititira na, it's gonna go in. The momentum is there, the swing. Here's Jam Cortez. Rakal, this time it's tapped out, but there's a foul on the play. Antipuesto will be credited with a foul. Oh, trying to sneak up quickly. Defense is a little slow-footed there for San Sebastian. So it's going to be baseline out of bounds for Letran. <laughs> Professor, they were trailing a lot early. Now they have a three-point lead. What changed exactly for the Stags? Well, defensively, they're able to stop the, at least limit the, uh, the shooting from the inside of Letran. At the same time, the offense is really picked up on their ends. Letran is guessing where the points would be coming in. First, they looking at Ian Sangalang, and then the three-point shot, and then the float from uh, uh, Abeba. Mahirap din basahin ang depensa ng Letran kung saan manggagaling yung puntos eh. There's a foul on the play. Yeah, and this time, Letran will, getting, will get free throws. But you, you gotta credit Letran here. Undermanned, nine-man rotation for Kocha, Tino, Pina. And a few good men mm -hmm. to save for Letran. You, know, you also have a lot of guys who usually see action aside from Kevin Alas. His brother Junju not playing, not suited up today. You know, when you're playing a team with a pivot man like Ian Sangalang, and you have a big body like Junjun Alas, you know, that will, that will go miles and miles. You, you get your big man some rest. Almazan doesn't have to deal with Sangalang 24-7. But uh, like what you said, undermanned is Letran, but they're playing well beyond what many people expected them to. They trim the San Sebastian lead to one. Baste goes to Abueva, tries to go inside. It's stolen by Zam. Very risky pass. Here comes Mark. Goes to Rakal. They go to Jam Cortez. That's his spot. Yes. Open. Very confident in this ball game. He gets it again from about 16 feet. And uh, Letran has the slimmest of all leads now 67 to 66. Here's Abueva. Up, oh. under. Oh, Oopsie doo, he gets the bucket, so he'll take it any way he can. Wow. 
seesaw battle here we're seeing Nico uh, in the fourth period San Sebastian up by one Bacal to Cortez they go to the corner no call on that one Cortez with a fadeaway wow. and Zab Cortez, Cortez coming up big today yes you know he's been given the the license to shoot at the same time the defense also not locking on him figuring out it's gonna come somewhere this is sabi natin wala si Kevin Alas he got a pick now who's gonna be the scorer for Letran and uh, Zam Cortez seems to be willing oh technical foul on yeah. Almasan for he, complaining after he was called for an off the ball foul he really didn't like that call made the official aware of it and probably said Maybe a couple no of the magic words seeing as how quick he got teed up for that one and this is very tricky, Professor. Six minutes, six minutes left. And is that it for Almazan? He's done. Yep, because it's going to be a first yes. foul. And big, big drop here in the game of uh, Letran. He's their best big man. And he goes out. Frankly, he's their only big man, at least with a chance at stopping Sangalang. And that is huge because he had three fouls. Got called for the personal, then which was his fourth. And a technical. And, you know, I was just about to say, you get called for a technical at this juncture of a ball game that's this close mm -hmm. and you're undermanned. That's a big thing already. And for the technical to be your fifth foul, that's a big blow. A chance for San Sebastian now to take the lead. They did that with the uh, Ronald Pascual's basket. And now they have possession, Professor. Mm -hmm. 6 oh, 6 a lot of basketball here. So, Raymond Almazan, that's all we'll be seeing from him. And also, Letran is in the penalty with that foul. So, four free throws here for San Sebastian. So, he'll get two free throws here. For and the technical, and then two more for the uh, penalty situation. And I'm not sure if they'll still get possession after. So, this could... Uh, well, that looks like what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, he's going to get four free throws plus and possession. possession. What a swing here for San Sebastian. Right. It's three of the four. So this could quite easily be a six-point play if they get a three-pointer here, for example, for San Sebastian. Turn this, turn what, what was a one-point deficit into what could be a five-point lead. And that's what Pascual tries to do. Shoots for three, and that's exactly what happens. <laughs> no hesitation. He's just locked in for it. But the when to get to Pascual, alam niya, Andrew, the confidence is there. Well, someone shine my crystal ball because what was a one-point lead as Jan Cortez, what was a one-point lead for Letran turned into a five-point deficit. Now it's down to three thanks to Jam. Pascual, open again. This time it's a miss. Sangalang on the post. Del Rio to Pascual. Ali Oop! Calvin oh. Agueva misses it. He gets the rebound and there's a Ooh. foul. He'll take two. <laughs> Crowd oohs and ahs. Here's the thing. And uh, no one feeling that sayang feeling, you know, more than Calvin Agueva. But there's a stroke from Ronald Pascual. Coach Tino Peanut has a lot to talk about with his team. They don't want to get this game out of control. San Sebastian leads by three. We'll be back. There is a crowd enjoying the action here inside the Super Down, the Superdome of Armagh City. What a treat they've uh, been given on this holiday today, Professor. And uh, the trans big loss, Raymond Almasan no longer in the game because of five fouls. The last one, a technical. He received two fouls in a span of about five seconds and they gave up five points. Five points in about as much time as well. The Jam Cortez responded with a jumper and uh, they fouled Calvin Abueva who is now on the free throw line for two. It's probably amazing some of our crowd here with that 
Hindi nagbabago yung stamina ng mga player. Parang hindi napapagod itong mga ito. They've got conditioning. You know, they, they practice year-round, even before and after the season. Sometimes they practice two, two times a day. And not to mention, they go to school too, I hope. <laughs> Well, of course. That's really a tough uh, thing for the players and the members of the faculty. They want to understand the athletes because they practice first thing in the morning, two, three hours. You don't expect them to be physically alert mm. the moment they step into the classroom. And, uh, they're really special people on campus, but that doesn't mean you're going to compromise standards. Well, that means, you know, of course, you have to go above and beyond, which is why the student athletes, student always comes first mm -hmm. before athletes. Uh, it goes out of bounds, it will stay with Letran. 5.07, halfway mark of the payoff period in the fourth quarter. Four points, Hill, not that big. Especially seeing as how Jam Cortez is taking over the scoring for Letran. Rakal has been amazing today. As you see, a three-point attempt missed there by Pantin. Offensive rebound goes to Letran. Mark Cruz as well, filling the point guard duties well. Here comes Etran. Rakal attacking the basket again. This time he misses the layup. And then here comes Ronald Pascual all alone. Leaves oh, the back for Abueva, but again Rakal. Rakal steals that one. Cortez. He tries to drop it off. Blocked. Here comes Abueva with a recovery. Great defense by Ian Sangalang. There's nowhere to go for Cortez in that play. Covering him like an umbrella. Sangalang, the last uh, person to cross, and he told his teams to slow down, and he wants that ball in the post. Abueva drives inside, though, leaves it off for Sangalang. Wow, yes, very patient. Sangalang was waiting for it, but when the incursion came in, he was ready to take that drop watch. And you know, like what we said, he told his teammates to wait for him, and he made sure that you know there was good reason why. Cortez tries to go inside. The defense of Bastet now really? locking up Ooh. Letran. Like there's no room for you to do anything except to pass that ball oh, around the perimeter. Here we see it. Abueva attracts so much attention from the defense. Got Belorio in the air. And then Sangalang just all alone. The time for coffee and a newspaper. Letran with the leather. They go inside. Oh. Stolen by Sangalang. Ahead to Pascual, all alone, Whoa! slams it down! That was what they were waiting for, sky high! Ronald <laughs> Pascual with a tomahawk brings his crowd to its feet. And they are pulling away here with the 326 left. What a play, Professor. Wow, just wow here in the crowd, getting a good treat. Shows you the power and the athleticism. And another one. And there's here's another another one. Hey, hey, and here's hey. Pasquale all alone again. Whoa. Two hands in this time. Whoa. Put a band-aid on that rim because it's got to hurt from all that pulling. Letran will call time as this lead is now a 10-point bubble. Here you see it. Sangalang. Forward to Pasquale. This was the first jam. A tomahawk. Boom, shakalaka. <laughs> San Sebastian definitely in it, leading the way. We'll be right back. Here you see it again, the defense of San Sebastian. Rakal, rejected by Sangalang. He will recover it, pass it ahead. Ronald Pascual will handle. Two hands behind the head, and then slam dunk, <laughs> baby. Crowd's <laughs> loving it. And of course, it brings the Ormok City crowd to its feet. It's a 10-point game, Last Professor. Season. What changed? How did this game become, all of a sudden, a double-digit, you know, there's a double-digit separation? Well, you're looking at leadership here. Some issues here. Almasan going out. I think they were affected by that thing, and they were not scoring. After that uh, Almasan fifth foul, it was only Cortez who made a basket. And in the case of uh, San Sebastian, they were running the floor, stealing the ball, making some blocks, and scoring in transition. Mentally, there was a breakdown by Letran. And we said it earlier, Prof, as we see a three-pointer by Pantin missed. But Letran recovers the ball. There is the attempt by Rahal, and he gets it. We mentioned earlier, San Sebastian is streaky. Mm -hmm. But wait, here's a streak as Rahal 
fetches the foul off that steal. Del Rio couldn't handle the pass. We we'll go to the line for two. Oh, those are the chances oh, really for uh, San Juan de la Plata. They cannot just say, hey, it is a show now of the Baste people and the crowd is loving it. They got to put their head down and go back to that blue collar job that they did in the first two quarters. And we mentioned earlier, San Sebastian very streaky when it comes to putting those points together. If you excite them, give them the momentum, they'll put on a show. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Ronald Pascual did in, you know, back-to-back -back occasions. And coming from steals in transition that's where they love and they're most effective ito may pagod na rin walong player na lang ang pinagpipilian ni coach Tino Pinat para sa letran with Almasan out in personal fouls and their primary offensive and defensive option is gone Pascual trying to handle that ball he gets it across here's Abueva he'll reset 12 seconds on the clock he drives Gets the foul and uh, he'll take two free throws. Oh, it's so unconventional when you look at the play of San Sebastian. Either Pascual or uh, Abueba, they don't need a point guard in certain in in situations. They just make the and, and then they could have the drop off or get the shot themselves. So Abueba with a chance to extend the seven point lead. Two free throws, it goes in, and you know. With that Almazan foul and technical, it also brought them in the penalty. That was at the six-minute mark, Professor. So ever since then, San Sebastian has been taking free throws at every whistle. And there is really no determined shot blocker on the part of the Tran to just, just make the stats think about driving in. Oh, and here's Abueva with a steal. Got confused when he was hemmed in by Miranda. Pantin was right in front of us when he threw that pass and he knew right away that he gave it to the wrong guy. Sangalang operating on Belorio. With patience gets it out to Miranda who shoot it from there. 15 feet, no good. Belorio handles it. Here comes Mark Cruz. They need, if they want to run, they better put it together now. Jam Cortez inside. Belorio tries to save it for the composure calling out of place here for San Juan de Letran. Who's going to be their go-to guy? They lose control of that possession. And there's a timeout called on the floor. Coach Topex Robinson wants to lock this baby up. 1.45 left. We'll be back. ABS-CBN Sports continues to give you exclusive coverage of the Philippine Collegiate Champions League. An elite eight matchup here, the final slot for the, op for the final four. That's what we're trying to fill. It will be either San Sebastian or Letran. 1.45, that's how much time Letran has left to put a run together. Here's Abueva, finds the lane, drops it off for Miranda. Well, that's a travel. Gets a stamp on his passport for too many steps. Well, the front covering him well. Time running out in the game of uh, the Knights, 83-74. So 142. They're trying to put together one last attempt. At maybe stealing one from Baste. Here's Letran. Belorio takes a jumper. Short on that attempt. And mm -hmm. Pascual takes it down. He didn't have a lot. He didn't have a lot of offense. No, they were up 69-68 at that play and they've only scored five points since that six minute mark uh, Nico while San Sebastian has put up a string of points here at the score of 83 and thunderous points at that I know a dunk and a layup count as much you know they both count for just two points but there's something about the impact of the, the dunks <laughs> exactly especially if it happens two possessions in a row off of steals <laughs> So nine point lead, 110 left here. Miranda sits down. Sebastian looking very good to join San Beda, Ateneo, and the University of Cebu. And yeah, UC punched their ticket by beating their rival Southwestern. Professor, it's, gonna, it's not going to be your usual Final Four setup once these four teams are settled as Mark Cruz takes and makes a three. Not giving up, not giving in. Well, that's exactly what it says at the back of their jerseys. Hey, it's just a six-point game with 50 seconds left. If Letran can get a stop here, anything is possible. I mean, if we learned anything from that Southwestern game, don't count your chicks until the eggs have hatched. Here's Abueva. 
Miss, Sangalango, big offensive rebound, and they will milk the clock. Feeling it, Ben of San Sebastian. About a 14 second difference between game and shot. It's gonna be a, an exciting final four for the PCCL, starting December 5. And it's uh, like what I was saying, as Abueva is blocked there and the ball goes to Letran. It's going to be different, Professor. Real quick, how does the Final Four work in the PCCL? Well, you'll have a round robin and then the top two will go on to play in the finals and the number one will have a twice week advantage. So it's not your usual one versus four, two versus three. All of the four Final Four teams will meet each other in a single round robin as that rebound for Abueva Locks it in, and they will be the Luzon Metro Manila champions here in the Philippine Collegiate Champions League. They get a rematch against San Beda. They get to face Ateneo, and uh, also Fajardo. they're going to face the UC Webmasters, Junimar Fajardo. So our final forecast is set, Professor. What can you say about Beda, Ateneo, Baste, and UC? Well, in the case of Ateneo and uh, San Beda, they've been out of the tournament. They've just been practicing. That could be an opportunity for UC and San Sebastian. Slight, slight advantage of uh, being in a tournament with, of course, just a few days before that uh, the semi-final series, which will start December 5. Well, in the case of Ateneo and Beda, well, they've got the half. They want to prove it. And then they're looking for a script, Beda Ateneo, because they're champions in the NCAA mm -hmm. and the UAAP, respectively. We've got stars coming to the final four. Ravena, Salva, Abueva, Fajardo, uh, you know, even Garvo Lanete. Our final forecast is set from everyone here in Ormoc. A great job done by our entire staff and crew. Thank you and congratulations to them. Thank you as well to the city of Ormoc. In behalf of my partner, Professor Randy Sakdalan, our producer, Teresa Carlos, our director, Mark Morales, and uh, everyone else who's made our stay here on Ormoc possible. My name is Nico Ramos, thanking you, and we'll see you at the final four of the Philippine Collegiate Champions League.